there. Uh, this is Harry Donahue. I am one of the directors of Friends of Philadelphia Trolleys. As you may be aware, for a number of years we've been raising funds for 8042. Uh, 1923 Brill Peter Witt style Philadelphia car. Uh, it was remodeled in 1940-41 by PTC and for about 15 years it spent most of its time on Route 10 and the subway surface. For the final two years it was in service, it was at Southern Depot on Route 17 and 32. It's out here at Pennsylvania Trolley Museum and we'd really like to bring this project home and we'd like to raise another $10,000. There's more interior work to be done, there's truck work to be done, and then we want to paint it at the end. So we're asking for your help. And I'm going to turn this over to the Director of Restoration out here at PTM, Bruce Wells. And he's going to give us an update on the car, what's been done, and what still needs. Hi, my name is Bruce Wells. I'm the manager of restoration and shops here at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. We're in the Trolley Museum shop, and uh, today we're going to look at uh, Philadelphia Transportation Company 8042, a car that was uh, remodeled uh, from its original in 1941. It was one of 50 cars that had the conductor's booths taken out. It uh, was a lot of uh, time, it, it spent time after that as a paint liner, which was a car that had giant wings painted on the ends. and and uh, it was remodeled to fool people into thinking they were riding on a newer car. They put light fixtures in that were the same as the PCCs. Not everybody could have a PCC on their route, so they wanted to try to uh, gin that up to get more excitement from the riders. They also put in better brakes and all kinds of other things. At any rate, uh, World War II intervened and the uh, car was, uh, uh, the, the, the first 50 cars turned out to be the only ones that they completely remodeled. After that, they sort of used this as a model for, uh, for some of the work that they did during the war. In 1953, we believe, somewhere around 1953, they had the car in the shop and they redid it in this paint scheme where it's uh, cream above the belt rail and green below, which is uh, kind of in keeping with what they did with the PCC cars. Uh, you know, at that time, they, it was more in keeping with the 2700 and so on. At any rate, uh, it was taken out of service in 1957. Uh, we're going to restore it to the 1953 era. What you see, what it was, the way it was when it was saved is the way we're going to go. Uh, taking it back to being a paint liner uh, requires uh, uh, changing some, some details that really aren't worth changing. It's better to represent it in the most recent era that people would remember it in, you know, but you have to be pretty old like me to do that. Uh, I don't remember these cars in the street. I rode uh, 8534 on Germantown Avenue, but that's about the extent of it. So anyway, um, the work uh, to date has included rebuilding the front end. Uh, all of these uh, frame members, the vertical posts, are new pieces, and uh, the, uh, metal on the front was reused, new dash apron pieces, that these transition pieces between the bumper and the front end are, uh, are being fabricated right now by Keith. Keith initially accepted a contract to do the front end and he has taken it apart. He has used uh, Porta Power and different uh, techniques to push the car back into the shape it was when it was new. This front end was pushed in about an inch and a half uh, from damage over the years. This uh, side plate over here had a really bad, cancerous, uh, it had a steel plate that had all kind of rust built up behind it. It turned out it was to camouflage the damage that we think came from a, from a, uh, from a box truck because the damage was all about 48 inches off of the ground. So. Uh, in the intervening years since uh, 2018, we've rebuilt this. Um, this countertop is sitting here, but we have, a, we have brand new metal on the side of the car, and that was one of our goals. Um, 
and and it was all re riveted it was all riveted new and a lot of new structural metal was put in the sides and in the floor. Okay, we're looking in the uh, main doors on the front platform of the car and we're looking across the car to the um, wall where the metal was all replaced and the metal framework was mostly replaced and rebuilt. Um, all of the, a lot of the air brake components were inside this cabinet along with a lot of other details that were in the car. And then up above, there were many um, electrical components of the switches and stuff for the car were moved to this corner. And they had a, a steel cabinet in the corner uh, that, um, that covered up all of, the, all of these pieces. The, the wood for the base of the storage cabinet and everything was completely um, rotted. And so that was replaced. And um, a new crown piece was also made for the shape of the end of the car. Keith spent a lot of time taking the shape of the roof and transferring it and getting the shape for the, uh, for the crown piece. The crown piece is, a, is about a two inch thick piece of oak that supports the end of the car. It's like a collision plate, only it's wood. And uh, it is a crescent shape like, a, like, a, like the moon, okay? Um, he also replaced all the wood that was the motorman's platform. Um, Bud Breslin uh, told us that um, they added this raised platform area to keep the water on the platform and the cold snow and everything from being, you know, from running down and getting around the motorman's feet to help keep them a little warmer in the wintertime. And of course, all the controls were taken out, the air brake stand, the controller, uh, handbrake, those things are all waiting to go back in the car. And, uh, and of course, we're going to be putting, you know, we've restored the sign boxes and, and the windows and everything, and they have to go back in. And that will pretty much wrap up this part of the car. We have to, we have to do some work with the door engines, but we can't do that until after we do work on the roof. At least that's the, the way uh, Keith has outlined the plan for us. So that's where we're headed. There we are inside the car. Uh, from your view of the interior of the car, uh, you should notice that there's a lot of junk piled up in here. It, it really isn't junk. This is the pieces of the car that uh, we've taken off to do the end platform, <laughs> which it turns out to be a substantial amount. There's a lot of sheet metal pieces. There are, um, there, there's the, uh, the heater grills and, and the cabinet that I spoke about that was along the wall. Uh, I'm leaning against the controller, it's sitting here, and all this stuff is kind of in our way. So one of the projects I have for myself personally in the next few weeks before we get started on the job is to build some uh, shelves where the pieces can go outside the car and out from under the car so they can be organized. So we're, we're shooting for that, and that's going to be on the wall out here, and I've got a new workbench that's going to have, that has room for bins underneath where we can store stuff in bins. We've got a lot of these blue bins that you'll see around in the, you know, in the video, and, uh, and we have a lot of parts in there. So we have we have need for storage, and I've got a plan for fixing that up. So that's that's one of the things we're going to spend some money on that we weren't planning on. Okay. So anyway, um, on the interior of the car, on phase uh, on the on the second phase, the first phase was to do the platform and to rebuild the floor which has all been substantially and, and very professionally done. The next step we're going to take is to do the ex, is to have the exterior roof sheathing done. And Keith is going to make all the wood to put on the roof, tear off all the old stuff, just, uh, get rid of the old stuff, take, haul it out of here. Of course, we'll probably help him on that. And then um, he will, uh, uh, he, he will, you know, put everything on the roof. And then one of the things we added to the project from the original plan was to, to do the sheathing on the bonnets, which is bending uh, poplar wood to fit the shape of the ends of the cars. And we're gonna have that done on both that. So the entire roof uh, sheathing will be replaced in this process, which is it's just a terrific um, thing for the longevity of the car. You know, for those of you that love these cars, this one's going to be rebuilt very, very well. Okay, uh, above that, the canvas. 
Uh, that's going to be a job that our volunteers are going to tackle. And above that, to put the pole base on the roof and, and build the uh, saddles and structure for the pole base uh, supports, we're going to do that too. Okay, moving on from, from the, that, the next thing will be to take out the interior here that you see above your ceiling, uh, above your head here, above my head, and uh, all the lights have to come out. Uh, when, the, uh, when the car was rebuilt in 1976 by Menair uh, in the Philadelphia area for the bicentennial, uh, they used one thickness, one layer of uh, formica for the ceiling. And I don't know whether it can be seen from, from the camera, but this, uh, this material was really thin and didn't have enough uh, body to support itself in the curve of the ceiling. So over time, the ceiling sagged in places and, uh, and, and that presented a problem. So uh, Keith uh, has a source for uh, a medium density fiberboard that we're gonna use to replace the, the headliner the ceiling is the headliner. We're going to replace the headliner, and we're going to uh, uh, have a, have an all new ceiling there. As part of that process, he wants to take down these panels above the windows, which uh, we, we we call these freeze panels. F R E I Z E freeze. And they were originally well. They're, first of all, they're all one piece from the front of the car to the back, so they're about 30 feet long, and that's why we need a uh, that's why we need some shelving that'll handle that, okay? And um, so the freeze panels are gonna have to come out. And uh, also the ad card retainer strip, it's one piece, it has to come out too. So those things are about, uh, they're over 30 feet long. And so we need the storage for those. Uh, on the ceiling, the original lights on these cars were bulbs that screwed into sockets in the wood, that, that were flush with the wood. That's the way the car was built. So the PCC light fixtures are going to go back in, and we have to we have to re-engineer how the ceiling was done because uh, in 1976 they added a lot of strips of wood to the ceiling to help hold. So uh, we're looking at the back of the car now. Uh, there's more stuff uh, visible here that's that was taken off of the car and is stored in here at this time, as I was talking about. Uh, there's more of a sag of the ceiling back here around these lights I see than than. We had in the front, although we have places where the headliner is cracked also. Anyway, uh, one of the things about the headliner job is going to be to reinstate the uh, roof ventilators and the ventilation grills on the inside. When the car was redone in 76, they took all that stuff off and left it out. And I'm hoping we have those things. I think we do, but it's been a long time since I thought about them, like until this minute. So anyway, uh, we're, we're going to reestablish the ventilator, uh, the, the ventilator grills on the inside, on the ceiling, and there are about eight ventilators. Uh, one of our uh, one of our volunteers is uh, uh, is trained in sheet metal work, and years ago made brand new ventilators for the roof because all the ventilators that came out of the storage uh, when we got the car in 2005. Uh, all but one or two of them looked like they'd been backed over by a car. You know, they were in bad shape. And so, uh, so new ones were fabricated from now, scratch. Back here in the back, we're looking at the back of the car. Uh, when we were working on the front end of the car and we knew how much deterioration there had been, one of the things we decided to do, because Keith had them, you know, he had the machine set up to do it, was to make new corner beams for the car for the back. And so we started looking at the back of the car and even though it's a lot straighter than the front was, it's still, uh, we just felt that it needed to be rebuilt. So we added that to the job since the original fundraising. And that's part of, that's part of the additional cost that we have in doing this restoration. So the new corner posts that we already paid for and already got, those are gonna go in New center beams are going to go in, new center posts. And then um, the skin on the outside of the car is all going to be taken off, uh, realigned, and replaced. And the dash aprons are going to be replaced, the transition piece between the bumper and the front end. So those are going to go in. 
And uh, so the, the rear end of the car is going to get is a nice treatment just like the front of the car. So again, that's going to add to the uh, overall quality of the finished product. And uh, something that uh, you know hasn't been done for years. The rear of the car is going to get rebuilt. That's another new phase of the project. The uh, next thing that is is it was added to the project since we initially uh, defined it is the upper sash windows. The upper sash windows are in good uh, condition and they work well, but they aren't uh, built to this to the original specifications of the original windows. And so uh, we're going to have new sash made. Uh, Keith is a master woodworker, and uh, you know I felt that we might as well get that done. It makes it makes the it's going to make the exterior of the car even more accurate than it than it is. And so new upper sash, and then finally new uh, folding doors and sliding doors. These cars had sliding doors in the center. Um, and uh, we're gonna, you know, we'll be able to go from there. So anyway, uh, so we're we were in the process of repainting things, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish that job up ourselves. But the new doors are gonna be built. They're gonna go on. The bonnets are gonna go on as part of that. Keith's gonna be able to make sure that everything fits in the door, uh, mo that the door motors fit into their compartment, and uh, everything goes back together well. So anyway, that's a that's that isn't a synopsis. That's like a that's like a three volume set of what we're doing to this car. Uh, please uh, help us out. Uh, one of the things that we haven't funded at all yet is to get the uh, car up in the air and and uh, do some overhaul on the trucks so that we can make it run because that's really the goal is to come out and have fun riding on an eighty hundred. My name is Scott Beck, our executive director of the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. I just want to thank Friends of Philadelphia Trolleys and all the supporters that have helped projects like this. We've had a number of projects at the Trolley Museum that have been supported, such as the uh, repainting uh, of Red Arrow Fender Door 66 and a number of other projects. So thank you again, and we hope you do support us on this wonderful rehabilitation project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Scott. Uh, once again, we want to try to raise $10,000 for this car, so we need your help because uh, we want to see it running out here at PTM. You can mail a check or we're now setting up a PayPal account. Check the website for the PayPal information. Uh, at the end of this video, there will be the address for Friends of Philadelphia Trolley. Remember, mark your check, 8042. Thank you.